And with our uh, next speaker, I would like to invite on stage another colleague from Poland, Krzysztof Turowski, representing University of Gdańsk, with the presentation on the modern investigations into the structure of production, a critic. I'm happy to be here, and I'm really happy that Karol has presentation before mine because he explained a lot of concepts which will be needed to explain what exactly is going on in the modern investigations into the structure of production. So, as you are probably mostly familiar with the structure of production, and probably the single most important figure in Austrian economics is the famous Haken Triangle. This is the figure which depicts, as Karol has shown, the uh, the important aspects of the structures of production, which are underlined by the Austrian economists. Unfortunately, it is not uh, shared by many other economists. And these are pretty universal characteristics if we think of the economy as a whole. The heterogeneity, uh, heterogeneity of the, uh, of the uh, goods, so the, we have different stages of production, and the time dimension. Of course, it doesn't capture all the complexity of real economy, so in my talk, I would like to concentrate on it as a rather a model, a short, shorthand, a short description of the economy as it is, rather a, a, a thought experiment on which we can play and we can see what we can infer about the economy itself and what are the, the limits of the reasoning. So, the Heiken triangles are probably, for most of you, the best known uh, from the Garrison, presenta Garrison di the grammatical presentation, on which he put together a few things, uh, such as the uh, um, production frontiers curve, uh, and also the high end triangles, and the demand and supply for loanable funds. This depiction is very useful for didactic purposes. It explains to layman what is Austrian economics about. It also is very useful when we try to compare the Austrian approach to the approach of, for example, of Keynesians and monetarists. And time and money of Garrison is a perfect example of this. However, if we look at the modern investigations, they actually really start at what we can find in what was one of the, Mises, uh, one of the Rothbards going beyond Mises and taking inspiration from both Hayek, Bombawerk, but also, for, for example, from the neoclassicals like William Stanley Jevons, and putting a full trapezoid scheme which, with numerical values at each stage. Rothbard used this actually to present his own theory of growth, of economic growth and economic development. As you might probably recall, the, the basic growth scenario for Rothbard is that some people refrain from the consumption because of lowering their time preference schedules. Then they move the, the resource to the investment, which cause structure to be lengthened. And this uh, lengthening may manifest, for example, in increasing the number of stages, which uh, depicts the, uh, the growing complexity of the economy. And the, in the consequence, the social rate of time preference or the, the interest rate falls. So we. As we observe, the high and triangle goes longer, but uh, its height is diminished. Overall, the structure of production, uh, despite, despite uh, being uh, the nominal value of consumption falling, gives us more goods, and we experience economic growth. This was challenged in the early 2000s by a few modern Austrian scholars, by uh, Filier, by Hulsman, and recently also by Mahay, who claimed, on the other hand, that actually they can construct a structure of production in which we take some, uh, we diminish income, we perform additional investments, but this leads us to the shorter structure of production in the number of stages. Uh, then was the whole, the whole discussion that, uh, for example, Murphy and Newman defended the uh, Rothbardian approach, and uh, there was a whole discussion whether there is a uniform relation between the time of preference schedule of agents, the length of the structure of production measured by the number of stages, and the interest rate. And uh, there were certain models which were proposed. However, I would like 
my point would be completely minor in this case. I would just like to point out that in this whole discussion, one thing was assumed, which was debatable, and it led the whole discussion a bit astray. The, the point is that we have so-called time invariance assumption. If we look into Rothbard, we find a quote, and he said that we must remember that we've been making the implicit assumption that the demand for money and the supply of money remains unchanged. Similarly, if we open modern articles, Philia, for example, points to George Reisman's Capitalism, other uh, big treatise on economics, in which he explicitly says that one of the indispensable two of the economists is assumption of a fixed constant aggregate expenditure of gold for products. However, this can be understood twofold. Either as a total money supply, which is fixed, that is the capital M, or the flow. And I try to take the simplest example which we can find in chapter five of Rothbard Man Economy and State and try to go step by step. And I encountered several problems. First, it was the issue, what exactly is the model? So, some um, people claimed that it is ERE. Clearly, it isn't ERE, since we experience a change, and ERE, by definition, uh, gains a perfect foresight, and no changes at all for the whole uh, time in the future. So the structure of production remains as fixed as ever. Rothbard explicitly invokes the structure of production, which he uh, calls a stationary economy, in which we ex may experience a single change, in which there is uncertainty which is gradually arbitraged out, and where we have a money. However, uh, if we even look either the ERE or the stationary economy, it is in the, uh, in the basic framework depicted as follows. We have respective units of time, let's say one month, and each production process, each stage takes one month. Then we set up contracts at the first day of each month, and the first day of the next month, they, they get renegotiated, and then we, uh, we turn into production, then another first comes, renegotiate, and so on. So, actually what we have, we, are, we have two things. At the nominal level, we have contracts which are fixed customarily at the beginning of the month. And uh, what we have at the real level is the production process are going all for the whole month. So we cannot, of course, create scarce good at will, but we may re renegotiate contracts. Moreover, since we have here arbitrarily uh, taken a unit of time for a month, what we deal are the flow variables, not the stock. So if we are talking about the time invariance, it means the constancy of MV, MV at each level. And that, that was the, the main source of, of my problem. So, for example, if we take uh, any single agent, let's say that in period one, he decides to buy, uh, you know, capitalist earns some net interest, and he spends it all for consumption goods. However, in the next period, he may refrain from buying these consumption goods and use them for buying some previously uh, idle and submarginal original factors. This might be as well the case. So for example, he hires a new laborer. Then this laborer also receives at the first of the month his payment in advance, and then he may spend it exactly within the same moment or just, af just after on the consumption goods which were, uh, which were not bought by the capitalist, right? This is, this is fairly obvious. The problem is in this scenario that we have, suppose that we have this depicted structure as we encounter in Rothbard and many others. We have some uh, transactions for original factors, some transactions of capital goods, and some net interest which is earned. Here we have uh, the stages from mining to uh, distribution and retail. And of course, the net interest in uh, all the stages is, uh, is equal. Here it is. Uh, uh, it is depicted as such, but we may also depict it the other way. We may put it in the table. And when I started to write it in the table, 
I found the, uh, the peculiar thing that we have, uh, we may split the, uh, all the transactions going on between parties into uh, several parts. These are as much as, uh, as I see, up to even 10. So there are more, there are more transactions than, uh, than stages because all capitalists from their net interest buy exclusively uh, consumption goods. And we may write that the total consumption is 80, the total investment is 180. Therefore, the total money flow is 260 with a uh, rate of interest 11.1, 11.11 if you wish. However, suppose that we have the scenario that I depicted. So suppose that capitalist three decides, okay, I earned uh, net interest six. I decided to, uh, so I changed my time preference. I decide to invest more now and uh, reap more income in the future. So he decided to uh, hire additional, for example, additional labor. So in fact, he hires uh, original factors from the original factor owner. This means that the original factor owner's rent increase. The net earnings of, the, uh, of this uh, capital is decrease. However, the consumption goods stream might stay as well. Only uh, if the original factor's owner decide to buy exactly the same goods. It may be become uh, somewhat smaller because, the, uh, for example, the original factor's owner have the consumption goods somewhere very low in his preference scale. But the scenario is still possible. However, this change, uh, definitely uh, this does not change the, uh, the consumption stream. This does change the investment stream. And therefore, it has to change the, the total money flow in the economy. Moreover, it does not change the rate of interest at each stage, only the stage three. And of course, from the stage three, since capitalist three has to uh, paid from his net interest, the rate of interest has decreased. The effects we would have seen, they would only occur at the next stage. But at the next stage, there are two effects that would appear. First is the arbitrage. We have seen that here in the previous slide, we were clearly in disequilibrium. So the uh, people who are uh, the entrepreneurs would flow out of this sector uh, from capitalist free, possibly the other capitalist which would uh, working in, in that sector would flow to the other sectors of the economy. And that would cause rate of interest to equalize below the 11%. However, we should look also at the second part. The investment was done on purpose. It was supposed to increase the physical product. It was supposed to increase the value product in the, next, in the subsequent periods. Therefore, it would cause the physical product uh, and, and the uh, changes, so we would have the, uh, the more supply of the, uh, the good, of the capital good free, and we would also have the price changes. Eventually, the increased uh, capital good supply would result in increased uh, consumption good supply. Therefore, there is a second effect which, which goes pace. Unfortunately, this effect is uh, is often overlooked and it is often taken to be identified with the, uh, the lengthening of the structure of protection. And uh, if we look at the, uh, from this point at the structure of production, the arbitrage may go other way. It, would, it, it can make the structure shorter, it can make the structure longer. Of course, the increasing, uh, increased physical productivity would change the interest rate, it would raise the spreads, however, Regardless of the effect would be on the number of stages, the most important thing which is, is that the total production grows. So eventually we will obtain more consumption goods. Unfortunately, all the discussion was about and all the filial and Hussman objections were concerning only, the, uh, only this limited part which, on which they were uh, concerned about the nominal values. They were not looking into the real uh, mechanisms uh, below it, and therefore uh, they actually missed the point of this whole discussion. Of course, there were uh, in the past certain tr trials to, to capture uh, this capital intensivity structure, but 
putting it, uh, framing in a way that Rothbard and Reisman did in, uh, in concept of constant uh, MV is definitely a way to, for the, to take the real process to be hidden and to be replaced uh, f for the mathematical artifact, which is only the, uh, the effect of that we need to keep MV, MV stream fixed. However, this is not the case. So I think it is a very wide and very, uh, actually, very powerful uh, area of research which can, which can be done in the future. And actually, it is uh, more in line with what was already done in the 30s. If we look at an English-speaking word, uh, the models which were developed in Cambridge, for example, operate under this scenario. So this is not, uh, not to take all their conclu uh, conclusions seriously, but to try to look at the different perspectives. And definitely, the more precise way to depict the model and more precise way to state it would help us in the discussion anyway. Thank you. Sure, sure, uh, I know, I know, I know, I know that. One s simple question. Uh, you were talking about the increase in total production. Yeah. I, would, I wonder where the economy gets the resources to increase production. So, uh, okay, so as we, as we know that in equilibrium, it doesn't mean that all the factors of production are employed. If some uh, line of production is submarginal, we know that it will be idle and it will be idle for a good reason. It's still waiting for, for, I don't know, for new technology. Uh, it's waiting for more capital accumulation, which cannot make it feasible. It's waiting for the rate of time preference to decrease. So people, when people are eager to get something soon, they do not uh, uh, engage in very long production processes. So in, in, the, in principle, there may be some idle factors of productions, which result, of course, from the devaluations of people. And uh, we may take them. Moreover, mm, it is not the way that we do not. We experience that, for example, we work eight hours, not 10. We might, if we have enough incentive, or we, uh, we might sit. So in this, con in this concept, I think that there is some margin. Yeah. Thank you. As much as I'd like to see the discussion going on, or we have to cut it here, I'm you can continue after. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much, Thank Christoph. You.